All right, we looked briefly several weeks ago at how to create a topple surface, but we didn't do it in that much detail. We didn't talk about some of the other key components that you need uh, whenever you've got a topple surface next to a building. So I'm just starting off with a really simple four-sided building here. It happens to have a shed roof, but uh, for the sake of the demo, if you don't have a roof on it, that's all right as well. Uh, as this elevation view shows, I'm going to have a building that drops down below level one. And I'll be sloping the site so that I'll be able to see the impact of the uh, sloped topple surface on the building. And then we'll introduce the tool that helps us to deal with that situation. So I'm just going to first create that topple surface. And I'm going to do this in the site view. So I'll expand that and just get rid of these other views here. And you'll notice that when you use the topo surface, you don't have the usual alignment tools that you're accustomed to when you're creating walls and roofs and floors. Um, what I'm going to do then to kind of account for that loss is I'm going to go to the annotate tab and go to the detail line tool and just create a rectangle. Now, normally in a real project, you might have an AutoCAD file from a civil engineer or something like that that you can click on snap points to. In this case, I'm just going to create a random rectangle that would represent the property or the site. So I'll click on the detail line tool and just use the rectangle and just create something that would mimic, you know, a larger sort of site for this building. So just make proportions that look about like that. We want it to have to be uh, well beyond the bounds of the building, particularly on the north and the south, because as we slope this, we don't want to have the building uh, kind of running out of, um, or, or have the building spilling over the edge of the site. So this is just 2D detail line work, of course. The intention is that I'm going to delete this once I've got the topo surface finished. It's just there so that I've got something that I can snap to. So now that I've got my 2D detail lines in place, I'm going to click on the Massing and Site tab. And right below that on the Model Site panel, I see the topo surface tool. And just four clicks here. You'll see that as soon as you make three clicks, it's got enough information to start creating a polygon. And that's all that we're doing here is just creating a four point, just a rectangular surface. And by default, it just uses an earth material. We'll look at how we can manipulate that as well. And we're in sketch mode for this. So when we're finished, we just have to click on the green check. Now what it's done is it just placed that topple surface right at level one or right at kind of ground zero. So with the aid now of having the, the levels in the 3D view, you can see where it's placed that topple surface. So at the moment it's just a flat site. If this is all we needed, we really could use a floor tool or something else like that, something really simple. But um, we're expecting that we're going to have a site that's got some, some uh, variation to it. And to mimic that, we can play with the points with the topple surface. So in a 3D view, if I click on that topple surface, I'll see that I have the option here to edit the surface. And all that's going to do is just give me access to the points. So unlike other times where we've edited a profile or edited uh, a boundary and we see the pink sketch lines, all we're going to see here is just a highlight on the points that we used to create this shape. And we can select them. And notice as I make my selection circle, uh, nothing about the building or any other part of the project is being selected. So in this sketch mode, this edit mode, all I'm ever going to be able to do is just select the points. That being the case, I can grab these two points at the bottom or on the south side or front of the building and change their elevation. So let's just say just kind of randomly that these points on this sloped site are going to be at negative 7,500 millimeters. And as you would expect, now I've got a bit of slope to the site. I'll do the same thing at the back. I'll raise them up just to increase the steepness. So I'll repeat the process, select the points at the back. And just here in the options bar where I see the value for elevation, I'll just raise these up by the same amount in the other direction. So those will be 7,500. And maybe that's a bit steep. Let's drop them back down. Let's make them 2,500. 5,000. I promise I'll stop there. Okay, good. That's a little better. All right, so notice that what we've got here now are some lines that are running across our topo surface. And these are contour lines. And we can customize those a little later on. We'll get to that in just a second. But before we do that, we're going to just click on the green check. 
And I can do that by just making sure that I have the Modify Edit Surface tab current. If you ever lose sight of the green check and the red X, it's probably just because you've gone to a second tab that's appeared in sketch mode. So if I go back to Modify Edit Surface and click on the green check, now I can see I'm back in my normal sort of editing mode. And as you can see, if you do a section view, so if I go to my site plan view and click on the section tool, in no special way here, just using the same kind of convention that we've used before, I'm going to create a 2D section view. And we've got a fair bit of dirt in the house. Okay, so at the moment, uh, nothing has told the topo surface that it shouldn't be in the building. The way that we do that is we add what's called a building pad. So if I go back to my site view, Actually, this is better done in a uh, different floor plan view. Let's go to our lower level, what I'm calling my basement level. It might say level three on your file. So I'll just double click on that lower level where I can see the foundation walls. And on that same massing and site tab, I'm going to create what's called a building pad. <coughs> when I activate that, I'm in sketch mode. And I have to create a profile or a boundary like I would for a floor or for a roof. And I can base that on the outside faces of the foundation here. So if I use pick lines or pick walls, I'll try pick walls and see if that works. I'll hover over the outside edge of any one of the four walls, hit my tab key, and then it goes to a chain or a link of four walls. And then I can just click there and you can see the pink sketch lines on the outside face of the foundation walls. Now because I'm making this in my basement or my lower level, <coughs> you can see over here in the properties window, it's going to set this building pad down at that level. I can use an offset if I need to. Uh, but for now I'm just going to click on the green check. And it won't look any different really in a 3D view, but in that section view that we created, you'll see that what it's done now is it's just kind of cleared the topo surface away from the building based on where the bounds of the topo or the uh, building pad were. Now I don't have to just bind this thing to where the building is. I can do a custom topo or a custom building pad, sorry, and just create any shape that I like. So if in this section view I select the building pad, and go back to my basement floor plan level and click edit boundary. I can have this outside of the edges here of the building. So that maybe I'm setting myself up for something that might be like a little patio area beside the building. So whenever you're making any sort of changes and uh, manipulating the shape of your topo surface, uh, you're probably going to need a building pad to go with it just to make sure that you have something to kind of cut and fill uh, the topo surface. And at the moment, you can see that it's cutting away. But if for some reason uh, I had set this building pad, you don't have to do this. I'll just kind of show you. If that building pad had actually been based on something higher, like let's say level one, and I'll even go a meter above that, you'll see that it also fills. So depending on where it sits in relation to the neighboring topple surface, uh, it will either cut or fill and just kind of fill in the gaps. If I didn't have the building pad there, of course, um, like I did with the section view, I'd see that the uh, topple surface was just kind of filling inside the building. So I'll set that back to where it was. And just to kind of wrap up the demo, I'm going to show you how you manipulate the topple surface because it's very unlikely that you'll have something as smooth and even as that. And if I want to do something to kind of mimic contours and swales, then I would just click on the topple surface and then click Edit Surface. And as the graphic suggests, I'm just going to add more points. So now that I'm in sketch mode and I can see the points, all I have to do is just click here on Place Point. And the default is, is that whenever I place a new point, it's going to be at zero. I can confirm that here by looking in the options bar. And you'll see that it adapts and does the contour lines as I add these new points. And again, all those points that I just added are at zero. 
So what I'm doing here is maybe something similar to what I would do on a construction project where I might platform around the building just to establish a bit of level ground. But I don't have to stick with that. I could have set a new value when I placed the new points. <coughs> and as you might expect, if I select those points, I can change their numbers or their elevation values. So they don't have to be at zero. I can highlight them and enter a different value. And you'll see that Revit will do the adapting. Now, unfortunately, what it doesn't do is it doesn't really blend very well. This is going to be very uh, faceted. You're going to see that there's some very sort of jagged transitions between the points. It doesn't smooth them out like you might hope it would. So that's a bit of a limitation there. And if you want to add detail, you just have to add more points. And when you add those points, it's not going to be maybe as smooth as you might hope it would be. But you can still convey the slopes and, like I say, the berms and the swales that you might have around your project using this method.